So this is lecture 12, foreclosure process. Five. Let, let, let me, I'm sorry. Let me, oh, I was going to take a swig of water, but I'm, I'm out, so I'm good. <laughs> this is lecture 12, foreclosure process. Five, four, three. Now let's talk about what the foreclosure process is and what does the foreclosure process look like. So there's, there's a lot of um, misconceptions or people have in their own mind different understandings or different uh, definitions of what a foreclosure is. All right. So let me lay out for you very simply what the foreclosure process looks like. And when I say the process, what I'm talking about is the different stages that a property and the owner of the property goes through uh, when there is a impending foreclosure or the foreclosure process has started. So let's begin with stage number one. All right. So stage number one of the foreclosure process is what we call pre foreclosure. OK, so let me define what pre foreclosure is. Pre foreclosure is when the owner of a property is behind on their payments, they're behind on their mortgage payments or they are delinquent means the same thing. And they may be a month or two months or three months behind on their payments but the bank or the mortgage company has not pulled the trigger, if you will, and they have not started the foreclosure process. All right. So stage one is they're behind on payments. Now you may find it interesting to know that there is a federal law in place right now that banks and mortgage companies, um, and I don't give you this information to take advantage of your banks, um, but it, it's, it's good information to know there's a federal law in place that does not allow a lender, a bank, a mortgage company, whoever's holding the note to file and begin the foreclosure process until the, uh, borrower is at least 90 days behind or in arrears on their payments. So stage one, pre foreclosure. Um, and in each of these stages, and I'm not going to cover it in this lecture, but in each of these stages, there is a different way and a different process on how you approach the owner uh, or, or uh, the uh, different ways that you negotiate the deal. All right. But for the sake of, of this lecture, let's just define what's going on throughout the process. Stage one, as I said, pre foreclosure, all that means is they are behind on their payments. The second stage of the foreclosure process is now the lender, the mortgage company, the bank, they have now pulled the trigger and they have begun the foreclosure process. So what does that look like in this stage when I say they've pulled the trigger? What that means is that the bank has hired what's called a substitute trustee and a substitute trustee is nothing more than an attorney or a law firm. And most of the time, these are what we call uh, foreclosure mill houses. I mean, these are large firms and this is all they do is they represent banks and mortgage companies to handle the foreclosure process. So in this stage two, uh, the lender or mortgage company or bank hires the law firm, the substitute trustee, to begin the foreclosure process. And here's what happens. What happens, and this is typically in most states on public record, a notice of default will be filed, will be delivered by the uh, clerk of court or, or the, um, or the deputy sheriff. Uh, in some states it's called a summons. So this is not delivered through the mail. This is actually delivered to the property. They knock on the door. If someone comes to the door, they hand them the uh, summons or the notice of default. They have them sign receipt. If no one's there, then they tape it and post it on the door. So now this property and the owner of this property is now what's called, they are now in foreclosure. What's going to happen next? So that's the st second stage. Now they can, you know, they still own the property. It's not been taken from them. All right. So there's a period of time between the notice of default of the summons and then the next stage of process, which is called the hearing. Now, most states have what's called a hearing. The hearing is where the clerk of court will uh, have a hearing. And typically it's just the lender, the banker and the owner of the property. 
uh, are at this hearing, and it's the clerk of court's job to determine if the bank has got the legal right to foreclose on this property. And there's a checklist that they go through. And then after the hearing, the next process is the actual sale of the property at the courthouse steps. Now, this is all assuming at this point in time that the owner of the house has not brought their payments current and they're still in arrears. All right. So then we have the sale of the courthouse steps. So there's a public sale at the courthouse steps. Um, and, and, you know, uh, the it's the same law firm that is or substitute trustee that is representing the bank that's now going to conduct this sale. And that's a public auction. All right. Now, if the house or property sells and there is a buyer that makes the minimum bid that, and there's always a minimum bid set by the lender, uh, if the, if, if the uh, person that's making the bid buys the house, now the process is finished. However, if there is no buyer at the courthouse steps, then the final stage of the foreclosure process is now what's called bank owned, or that property is now taken back uh, and owned by the bank that lended the money on the property. Now, at this point in time, what happens in most cases is the bank will then list that property with a realtor to sell it. So a lot of times students will ask me, well, Jay, how can I, you know, contact banks and be able to buy their bank owned properties directly from them? Seldom is that the case. You're just going to have to wait until it hits the multiple listing service. And then that's the final stage of the foreclosure process. In this case, where someone did not buy it at the courthouse steps, and now it's being sold through the multiple listing service as a bank owned property. So there you have it. The foreclosure process from pre foreclosure all the way to bank owned properties.